All right, in this video, I'm going to be talking more about NumPy arrays. And, uh, and, and so far, I've just been showing a bunch of one-dimensional NumPy arrays, which are kind of similar to lists. And I'm going to be looking at, you know, what if we have two-dimensional NumPy arrays or three-dimensional NumPy arrays? And what are some practical use cases for that? And, uh, and so maybe I'll just start off by giving an example of a two-dimensional NumPy array. I can say np.array and... Uh, and what we've been doing so far is we might just pass in some values like one, two, three. Um, if I want to have, a, let, let me just put this in a variable here, as so I have that. If I if I say, well, what is the length of a? That's three. No surprise there. Um, kind of a very similar thing is I could say a dot shape. And when I see this, it's telling me two things. It's telling me that. Well, it's giving me this tuple, right? And there's only one number in the tuple. And so that means that this is a one-dimensional array. That seems correct. And there are three entries along that dimension. So let me create another um, NumPy array. I'm going to say b equals numpy.array. And I'm going to have the same thing, one, two, three. And to make it two-dimensional, I'm going to have um, basically a list of less, so four, five, six and peek at that, it's almost like a table, right? And in this case, there's a huge difference between looking at the length of it, which when I do the length of it, it's really just kind of treating it a lot like if I took the length of a list of lists, right? I mean, it's counting how many rows I have, whereas now b.shape is very informative, right? I can see it's a two-dimensional um, array because there's two numbers here, and I can see the sizes of those two dimensions are two, and three, right? So that's a that's a um, a matrix, right? And um, and so there are some other things I can do here. I can actually uh, change the shape of these things. So for example, um, here I have B. If I wanted to, I could say reshape. Um, currently, the dimensions are well, I have two rows and three columns. If I wanted to, I could uh, reshape it. I could say I want three rows and two columns, and it would be uh, just like this. Um, I could also, if I wanted to, um, I could change the number of dimensions if I would like. So I could say something like six, and now you can see it flattens it all down just like that. It's one dimensional um, with six entries in it. Um, now, there are some shapes that are not going to work. So for example, if I go back to this, if I want to get like, um, you know, three by three, no go, right? <laughs> I only have six items. I don't have nine items. So that's no good. So, so really, after I've specified most of these items, some of them are kind of constrained, right? So if I say negative one, what this means is I'm telling Python, or I guess NumPy specifically, you know, figure out what it should be. You know, you have six items, I want three rows, so do the math. I guess I should have two, right? Infer two columns is what it'll do. And there we go. And so like one thing you're going to see a lot is I, I might do this. I might say b.reshape, and instead of saying 6, I might just say negative 1. Basically, I'm saying like, hey, grab all the values of this matrix and just put them along this one big dimension. Basically, I want like a list, right? And uh, however long that needs to be, uh, please do that, NumPy. Um, you're sometimes trying to see these things used in combination uh, with some of these other functions we've seen. So, for example, when we saw uh, ones before, I, I could do like 80 ones if I wanted to. And, and then I could imagine reshaping this. Maybe I want to have, um, you know, like 10 rows and however many columns that leaves. I guess I would leave like eight, eight columns. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, eight times 10 rows would get me these 80 ones. Uh, and, and, and so I can do that. And and so this is all good so far. Um, let me add a little bit <coughs> of vocabulary here. Um, these one-dimensional things like back here, uh, these are what we call uh, uh, scalars, right? So that means uh, 1D. These examples here um, where I have two dimensions are called, uh, or I'm sorry, that's not, Right, these are called vectors, are the one-dimensional ones. Um, these ones where I have two dimensions are called matrices. Those are 2D. Um, and so what I want to talk about in this video is kind of going um, up or down a level. If I wanted to, I could um, 
you know, I've been doing lots of examples like this where I would say like numpy dot array and then I pass in a list, right? I could do that. If I wanted to though, I could just pass in a single number like, I don't know, three. You can look at that, right? And, um, and if I look at like the shape of that, I can see that it's an empty tuple, right? So this is, this is uh, uh, what we call a scalar. That's zero dimensions. Um, and, and there's a general word here, right? So I, I've seen, you know, scalar is zero, vector is one dimension, matrix is two. And uh, the word is tensor, and tensor is general term for any n dimensions, right? So, so this is a tensor, um, you know, this is a tensor. All of these things are tensors, right? Regardless of how many dimensions they have, right? Um, so that's all good. Um, I'm gonna be talking about images soon, and um, images, images, can be either 2D or 3D tensors. And so I'm gonna start with 2D tensors and then talk about why we might want to have a 3D tensor. And, uh, and it turns out that uh, Matplotlib makes it very easy uh, to make any matrix you want uh, into an image. And so let me actually import some Matplotlib stuff. I guess um, maybe this would be the most appropriate place to do it. I'm going to say import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Great. And then there's that run. It did. There, there's this nice function which I can say plt.image show. And, uh, and maybe I'm going to grab this thing with all the ones, right? So I'm going to say uh, a equals, equals that. And then I can just pass in any matrix here. That I like, so I'm going to pass in A. Maybe I'm just going to have this on top of each other so we can see it. And uh, and we can see it's this big solid uh, image uh, that's all the same color, and and all it's all one color because well I only have one number here. Um, it looks almost like a black, but it's actually like this weird purple color. Um, in general, you can pass in a color map. Right, and the color map map uh, associates colors with numbers, and there's a bunch of different color maps you could have. Uh, apparently, this one is saying that you know one uh, is this weird purple color. So, what I usually like to do is I like to have this gray color map um, that will put everything somewhere between white and black. So I do that, and now I get this pure uh, black image. Let me let me try to create a more interesting matrix so I can actually see some different colors on top of this map. Um, instead of uh, instead of ones, I'm going to say A range and I want to go up to 80. So I have that and all these numbers from 0 to 80 and I'm going to do the same deal. I'm going to reshape it and uh, let's say I want to have, um, I don't know, this time I'll say I have 10 rows and or I'll have like eight rows this time and however many columns that is so it's going to be wider than it is long all right so I'm going to do that and uh, and now I can run this same thing I could say this like image show thing and I could pass in this one where I actually have different values and uh, and you can see if I scroll down you can see that when I start with these small values it's very dark Right, so down here, it's really the amount of light we have. And then down here, when I have a big number, it's a very bright color, right? So I can create these little images. And, and of course, it matters a lot, like how, what the dimensions of the image are, right? If I do that, well, then it's very tall, or if I make it, say, four, then it's very, uh, very, very wide, right? So I can do that, and I can create lots of different um, images here based on that with these two dimensions. Okay, so let, let's deal with some real data. Uh, we need a real image somewhere. And, and so if I search for uh, Ladybug on, on Wikipedia, I find this here. And uh, I like the image because the colors are so vibrant. I can see like the reds and the, and the greens here. I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna right click and say copy image address. And, uh, and then I'm gonna head over, well, what is this thing, view in browser? Maybe that's gonna be better. Let me right click on this and say copy image address. Head back to my notebook. 
And uh, I want to say something like wget and then paste the URL. Maybe actually I'm just going to do it like this. wget URL dash capital O file name. That's the general command. And the file name will be something like, I'll just call it bug.jpg because, well, JPEG file. I don't want to give it this long scientific name. Um, and I'm going to paste the URL and I run that. And uh, it doesn't work because that's a bash command. To make it run like a bash command, I should put an exclamation mark in front of it. And that will, I run that and it actually downloads the file. If I head over here to Jupyter Notebook, I can see, well, there I got my bug.jpg, um, which is this really huge image actually. Um, and so that's all good. Uh, I don't want to re-download the thing every time I run my notebook. That was kind of a one-time deal. So I should absolutely delete that cell when I'm done. And, uh, and now I want to try to read in that image, right? So, uh, there's another function and, you know, I have a, you know, image show. There's also one called image read. So I'm going to say plt.imageread and I want to say bug.jpg. I can just pass in a path there. And, uh, and I get this big NumPy array. And so maybe I'll call that A like so. And uh, if I want to, I can just say, you know, matplotlib.image show. I want to see that image. And sure enough, there it is. I have the image. So let, let's take a little peek at this. So if I say a.shape, well, first let me look at it. You can maybe already see it's three-dimensional, right? And, and, and if I say a.shape, that will confirm it. Um, this image has six, or uh, you know, it has 1,688 rows, and you can actually see that along the y-axis. That, that's how many rows I have. And then along the x-axis, I have 2,500 rows right here, right? So, so that kind of makes sense why I have this. I, I have that many rows, that many columns. And uh, what is this three here? Well, it, it, it turns out that images, each pixel is represented by a uh, red, red, green, blue max. And so I actually need for each little cell in this table or image, right, the tiny little cell there, I need to have, well, how red is it, how green is it, and how blue is it? So if I, if I kind of looked at the image again, what, what's going on here, right? This is all the rows. And, uh, and then here I have a, a column, right? I have a bunch of different columns. And then, so here, here's just like one cell. And within that cell, I have these three layers, right? And these three layers tell me how red is that pixel, how green is that pixel, and how blue is that pixel. And that's how I end up with, uh, end up with that image. So with that uh, knowledge, I can make various transformations on, on top of that image. Um, one of the things I could do is I could try to crop it. Like, let's say I just wanted to like get this part of the image and kind of get rid of that, kind of get rid of this stuff over here on the right. Well, how, how would I do that? I, I would have to have some sort of um, slice and uh, it's three dimensional. So I would need three slices. I need a slice one, a slice two, and a slice three. And to be very precise, well, this is a row slice. This is a column slice. And this is a layer slice. Right, so there's kind of these three layers, the red, green, blue layers. And, um, and since we're dealing with images in particular, there's some special vocabulary there. Those three color layers are called channels um, if we're dealing specifically with an image. So this is what I need to do. I need to write separate slices for each of these. And, um, and so how do I want to crop this thing? Well, uh, I guess like, let's say for the rows, let's say I just want to like get 400 and below. So here I'm going to say I want uh, 400 and beyond. And then for the columns, let's say I only want to go up to like, um, I don't know, 2000. I'll say only up to 2000. And then for my um, for my channels, well, I, I of course want all the colors. So I do that, and I can actually say uh, plt.image show, and it should kind of crop down the top and uh, right of the image, right? And you can see it does, right? I'm kind of zooming in much more. 
um, on, on the insect in question. Now, the other thing I could do, right, when I'm doing this, let me let me put this back here. Let, let me just take a slice of everything, right? So I'm gonna get every row, every column, every color. I can do that. That's the original image. Um, if I wanted to, I could pull out not take a slice, but just pull out an individual color, right? So, you know, it turns out that zero is red, one is green, and two is blue. And so if I do this, this should just pull out the red parts of the image. And so if I run that, it, it's a little bit weird because let me just look at what the shape of this thing is. You, you see that when I don't put a slice in this position, I'm actually pulling out one of the layers. Then I get down to two dimensions. And when I get down to two dimensions, well, Matplotlib doesn't know how to do the whole red, green, blue thing. And so it has to use a color map, like actually way back here, right? Back here, I need a color map because I had to give a color to each of these numbers. And so my go-to color map is always the gray color map. And, uh, and so I'm going to do that here. So I'm going to do that. And what this is doing is it's showing a very bright color wherever there's red, right? And of course the bug is red and that's why this part of the image is so bright, right? So this is gonna, you know, this is gonna show, you know, make the red parts bright. That's what it's doing, right? Because I'm just pulling out that. Um, if I, if I wanna do another one, let's say I wanna make like the green parts bright, I'd pass in one make the green parts bright. I guess that would be like the grass. And so the grass is kind of bright there. And you can see the bug is actually much darker now. And finally, if I want to make the blue parts bright, that'd be two, then I'd expect the image to just be kind of dark overall, right? There's not a lot of blue um, in that image, right? I mean, sometimes it's mixing with other colors, but that's definitely the darkest because there's not much blue uh, in the image overall, right? So you can definitely see the difference between these, right? When I'm pulling out the red, the bug is really bright. Otherwise, the bug is really dark. You can also see there's more green in the bug than, uh, than there is blue. I guess maybe that's some sort of um, slight orange uh, orange color going on, right? Um, cool, so you're gonna get some practice with doing other things with these images uh, and uh, I'll leave you to it.